Huh? You said? Shola, I can see the past president uh, patron on. So you can't keep him waiting. You should be able to start it uh, waiting by now. Can you hear Sorry? me? The past president is on. I can see him on the screen. You can't keep him waiting. It is now okay. seven okay. past ten in my time. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, distinguished board members of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce, our participants on today's milestone occasion of the 60th anniversary public lecture of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the National President of Timber, Tony Abumalabe, we welcome everyone. And we acknowledge the acceptance of our distinguished speaker Prince Julius Adelsi Adelsi, who has honored us by turning up today to deliver the keynote address. Without wasting further time, welcome all board members. May we have the national anthem, please. the rendition of the national anthems of Nigeria and the United States of America respectively. And I'll call on the, the Admiralty Committee that has worked assiduously to bring all these things together, starting from the press conference that we had a month ago. Uh, we have the chairman here, and other members of the committee, uh, including the and Williams. I now call on the chairman of the committee, Vice President, Mr. Yohi Brahma, to present his opening remarks. But Vice President, please. Thank you, our DG, Shola Badimu. 
Our dear national president, Otumba Tony Akomola I recognize you, sir. Our national, the national president of NASIMA, the National Association of Chambers, um, Industry, Mines, and Agriculture, NASIMA, that is Hajiya Saratu Iye Aliu. I know you are joining us from the eastern part of Nigeria today. Uh, we welcome you. Of course, our dear guest speaker and past president of the chamber, Prince Julius Adelusi Adeliyi, we recognize and welcome you, sir. All our distinguished past presidents who have joined us online, we welcome you all uh, to the board members and ESCO of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce. I also bid all of you welcome. I say welcome. Uh, the chapter chairs, the entire members of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce, our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the national president who is right here with us, um, we welcome you to the anniversary lecture of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce. NAC is 60 years old, as we all know, and um, we have planned this celebration for last year, or for COVID that uh, interrupted. So we are having this lecture today to celebrate 60 years of the foremost bilateral chamber in Nigeria, Chamber of Commerce. And it is, of course, gratifying to know that um, a very distinguished past president and the chairman of Julie Pharmacy, Prince Julius Adelisali, has agreed to speak to us on the 60 years of partnership, you know, of um, Nigeria and the U.S. in promoting peace, promoting prosperity, you know, for businesses in both countries. We're, of course, going to have a great presentation. I have no doubt in my mind that our distinguished speaker will um, speak to most of those issues that tie both countries together in the area of trade and bilateral relations. I want to say a big welcome to all our participants. The numbers are climbing. We expect more members to join us because as at the last count, we had about 200 members who had registered. I want to say um, it's going to be a great afternoon as we listen to a brilliant uh, presentation from our past president. So I thank you very much on behalf of um, the national president of the chambers. I say a big welcome to all participants. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Ehi Braman. That was very brief. It's now time for the National President, Otumba uh, Tunya Komolafe, to present his welcome address. Mr. National President, sir. Thank you very much, DJ. All past presidents of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce the distinguished guest speaker of today, Prince Julius Adelusi Adelui. Our invited guests, my colleagues of the chamber, distinguished members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I am highly humbled and delighted to give this welcome address on this milestone occasion of the public lecture, being part of a chain of activities to mark the sister's anniversary, celebrations of our foremost bilateral chamber. As we all are aware, these events were supposed to have taken place last year but we had to quite understandably defer all planned activities to this year in recognition of the unpredictable impact of the dreadful COVID-19 pandemic. The chamber has had its fair share of policies and challenges over the years. However, what has been consistent is the drive and commitment to our mandate in line with the vision of our funding fathers. 
Therefore, whatever we're doing today is a partly a tribute to the memories of these great men and women who literally saw tomorrow. When they sat down to conceive the idea of formation of this great chamber, I would like to appreciate the efforts and inputs of all past presidents who have relentlessly dedicated their, themselves and their valuable time to keeping the flag flying, irrespective of the vicissitudes of the operating environment. I wish to especially appreciate today's special guest of honor and speaker, a man who needs no introduction, as you all know, is no other than a former honorable minister for the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a foremost business guru, a trailblazer in the stock exchange market, and a past president of the Chamber of Commerce, our own Prince Julius Adelui. Adelui. Can we stand up to appreciate him, please? Thank you, President for graciously accepting to honor the chamber by speaking to us today. I wish also to use this opportunity to appreciate our operating team of the chamber, which uh, includes the board, the ESCO, and as well as members of the 60th anniversary committee headed by is able chairman, Mr. Ehi Bremer, and as well as the indefatigable director general of the chamber, Mr. Olushola Obadimo. This chain of events, which was flagged off with a very successful press conference on February 18th, 2021. My terms of appreciation also goes to our committed members for supporting the chamber of this, on this long journey over the last 60 years. With that much ado, once again, I welcome all members, guests and participants to this public lecture. I wish everyone an enlightening and fruitful interaction. Thank you very much. National President, 8th of April 2021. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. National President. We are well within schedule. The National President of Nasima, Adia Saratu Ia Aliu, they are trying to link us up from Inewi, precisely. Zoaburu village, where they are going to commensurate with uh, their first national president, Mr. John, who lost his mother. So um, as soon as they are able to link up, uh, she will present her remarks. They said the, the, the signals are not so good in that village. Nyainewi. So we'll move straight into the anniversary lecture uh, titled The Role of the Private Sector in 60 Years of the Nigerian American Chamber of Nigerian American Partnership, presented by our revered past president, Ms. Julius Adelusi Adelui, past president, Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce. Past president, you have the floor, sir. Um. Thank you, Shola. Thank you, sir. And I hope uh, everybody can hear me on this occasion. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Uh, this is uh, an occasion more special than many people think. And I congratulate uh, the leadership 
uh, the board and the management of uh, the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce for organizing this. He's talking visually. I am particularly uh, impressed and I do appreciate the leadership style that uh, our current president has embarked upon since he took office. I'm not surprised. Uh, the president of Tumba, Uluwato Ilugo Akomalafe, as a man that some of us have watched uh, for most of his life. Uh, we are happy that uh, as an entrepreneur, he has carried uh, a business from infancy. Uh, that is the index uh, Brook Limited from infancy to a stage where today we know it's uh, an intercontinental entity. Guyana, Angola, uh, Mozambique, and, uh, places like Pasadena, and Ghana. Anybody who does that and becomes the leader of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce uh, is to be appreciated. Uh, and I also know that uh, Tony has a robust appetite for hard work. No wonder he's turning the chamber around. And I say, uh, congratulations, our dear president. And I know that uh, you have had to wake up given the time uh, difference between our various locations to be fully dressed as you are, all the way to your ears uh, to participate. May God continue to bless you and your tenure. I would also like to uh, appreciate Olushola uh, Obadiumu who has uh, called me several times. Now, that is the stuff that uh, administrators uh, should be made of. Uh, he even called me only about uh, a few minutes ago just to make sure that I link up. But I'm not surprised. I've uh, come across uh, Shola in other equally dignified organizations. He was DG of uh, NBCC. He was uh, executive secretary of the uh, Nigerian South Africa Chamber of Commerce. And he's been the acting uh, DG of uh, Institute of Directors. So coming here, he's come fully, fully equipped. A great deal is expected of him. And he's beginning to show us that he has a great deal to put on the table. I also have taken a look at the list of members of the board and what I find is that uh, Otumba is very lucky to have these distinguished and dedicated people working. Uh, no wonder uh, this program is coming up. But something tells me that uh, the program details have come in place thanks to the dexterity, experience, and deliverability of one of my cherished uh, brothers. Uh, I'm talking about. Uh, Ehibraima, who I'm told is the anniversary chairperson and who never leaves any stone unturned when he's called upon to, to do. And I understand that he has been uh, supported swiftly and strongly by Dame Adebola Williams. All of the aforementioned I appreciate and I wish you well. In your togetherness, you're making a good structure for the chamber, and it is something that I want to uh, laud you for. Now, I know that um, because of his business approach and because of the organizational ability of uh, AHI, you've had your press conference as far back as 18th of February uh, at the uh, Grub Hut restaurant, uh, not far away from our secretariat. And all those things you listed there, I have no doubt that you will achieve. 
uh, whether it's the visit to uh, selected persons, whether it's the charity walk all the way to uh, the consulate of the US embassy, whether it's uh, the uh, dinner or the coffee table uh, book you want to do, you have enough resources to do this. And you have strategists under a he who will surprise you with results. Thank you, sir. Now, today we, we're talking of a lecture, which is to kind of kick off the pragmatics of the program. Um, we are talking about a lecture. Uh, don't expect from me any of these soporific and uh, ornamental lectures. Uh, it is four o'clock and after. My approach will be rather conversational. And I should be talking about the chamber, uh, what was, what is, and what can be going forward. And I, some of these are familiar to you, but on the occasion of the 60th anniversary, which is now 61, um, it's really worth our while to let the world know that um, we have a chamber worth boasting about. And that's why I think we should briefly realize that those who started it didn't in fact think of having a chamber at all. They just wanted a Nigerian American dining club. Because by that time we already had British oriented dining clubs in Ikeja, in Apapa and in Ikoi. So these uh, three people, but actually four of them got together, uh, Wobolaji Bankantoni of blessed memory, uh, Christopher Gubanjo, uh, Bob Fleming, who was the PR for mobile at that time, but somebody not very usually mentioned, but who also played a very important role was Bob Hewitt. Bob Hewitt was uh, the MD of a Chase Manhattan Bank. And he it was who actually catalyzed the whole thing into becoming a chamber. Uh, and um, the first few years were interesting. Uh, one of them was seven as secretary, uh, taking notes and uh, just nothing too formal uh, until they decided to make sure that they would elect people who would actually serve not only on the board, but also as secretary of the uh, newly formed chamber. Remember that this is the first chamber formed in Nigeria. So there were no books to copy from earlier ones. And you must let people know that the Chamber of Commerce, Nigerian America, set the pace in constitution making for bilaterals and in program fashioning for bilaterals. So, you know, the, the very first one that was uh, elected as secretary was um, Chief Frank Akinrele. Some of you may have heard about his name because he then became president later. The same thing with uh, J. Akin George, who was the second secretary. Uh, he never became president, but he loomed very large in the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. But after which people realized that you just can't be making members of the board do all the secretarial work. So they, 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 they shopped for uh, some administrative person. And this is where you had somebody like E. Alabi Thompson, who served as secretary, uh, then as assistant, uh, yeah, then as executive secretary, then assistant director. By which time I came as president and I had thought, this is Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce, we need a, a director general. And so uh, we obtained the services of one young man called uh, Richard Ikiebe. Richard Ikiebe was, of course, a non-journalist, was a special assistant to some minister. And that's how the whole thing changed and the chamber became uh, consolidated. And I believe with that kind of history, we can boast and say to ourselves, well, we have uh, uh, blazed the trail as an old chamber. But come to think of it, chamber movements uh, around the world are much older than ourselves. In the meantime, there's a struggle between Ghana and South Africa 
as to which chamber uh, is the oldest. You'll find that uh, the South African uh, Chamber of Commerce was formed in 1804, whereas the Ghana Chamber of Commerce was uh, formed in uh, 1761. Now, Ghana is saying we are a national one, and Cape Town is saying that the Cape Chamber of Commerce was the first, whatever. But these are how movements are made. But even when in the process of their trying to say that a chamber belongs to them, uh, it must be remembered that the whole history of chamber formation started in France in a place called Marseille. Uh, uh, and this uh, actually occurred in 1599. That was the first time chamber movement was ever formed. Before then, every individual catered for themselves in contrast with government and points of contract. Uh, but then the chambre de commerce uh, evolved when that one of Marseille was uh, formed. So we're old, uh, 1960, but there are some uh, older. But bilaterally and in Nigeria, we are the Chamber of Commerce, Nigeria American can beat our chests. And I congratulate all of you who are board members and who are actually uh, members. So with that kind of history, we do have a responsibility to continue to make people realize that a chamber movement is something that must be respected. But if you say you must be respected, you have to earn that respect. And, you know, this is a bilateral thing between America and uh, Nigeria. Nigeria can only have an impact if we, are, if we are a strong movement. America is already a larger partner in the partnership. Uh, and so they themselves have advanced in bilateralism. But we, in order to have an impact, would have to uh, consolidate ourselves. And when we talk about consolidation, what do we really mean? Uh, we look at our chamber very pragmatically and we say to ourselves, our to-do list is important. Now we need a very strong board, which by the grace of God, now you are achieving, but it's not enough to achieve it in this regime. It must uh, be sustained. We need good working committees that can, uh, in fact, uh, through the uh, board, uh, make suggestions that can make similar committees in uh, the US work uh, in tandem with them. We need to have more branches. Uh, this particular regime of yours has had branches uh, uh, which are very, uh, which, which are strong, I understand. Uh, but there's nothing better than having as many branches as you can have. Uh, 20, 21, 22 years ago, when I was president of this chamber, we made uh, five branches in the US. Uh, we made 11 branches, 14 branches in Nigeria. And of course, we, we, we enjoyed a lot of respectability on both sides. So you never lose. If you have uh, uh, branches that are self-sustaining, and we can't go into that today. But you also need uh, to have a secretariat. Uh, as you know, the chamber has gone through all kinds of uh, places of refuge to put their heads as, as an organic uh, entity. We started meeting in those early days, 1960s, in the Bank of America building. Uh, after which we moved to Balogun Street, 42, 46 Balogun Street. Then we moved to an investment uh, house uh, in Broad Street. When I was president, I thought the investment house was overcrowded. So we went into uh, a new building called the Marble House, where we took the eighth floor. And just by merely moving to that, uh, our optics as a chamber went up. And I think uh, now we are at uh, Darlington Street in Victoria Island. 
I believe what we need is to work for our own secretariat building, obtain the land that this has been on for some time and get it uh, built. If we say we're the foremost, we must be seen to be having some place uh, where we are dom domiciled, not moving from place to place. Uh, money, money may be the challenge, but with the kind of members we have, like they do in the US, members have subscriptions, but because of their programs and because of the contacts and connectivities of the membership, donations can be made uh, to realize a project, but you don't need a secretariat. Uh, we also need uh, membership, but the membership must be based on the QQC formula. Uh, in other words, there must be quality control, quantity control. Uh, there's no need having a thousand members if, um, if uh, you can't control them. Mind Remember that, remember that some, some chambers around the world have only about 12 people. Of course, there are some that have about 800,000. If you go to the Chambre de Commerce, the Paris, the Ile, uh, also in France, but 800,000 people, I, I attended their meetings twice and you had to list the things via overhead uh, monitors. I think if we have about a thousand, two thousand and work towards that and make them busy through committee work uh, and research uh, challenges, uh, a good leader can make sure. Remember, it's not always you've had just one president. Remember that uh, if it, at least three presidents served two terms of uh, two or three years. I mean, the first to do that was Simon Bolaji Bank Anthony. The two terms were not continuous. Simon Bolaji Bank Anthony was first president and others like four or five followed. Uh, and then it was necessary to have him again. And he came and gallantly brought us back to uh, the right direction. So did uh, Gumbanjo, who actually is uh, the, uh, uh, an obvious survivor of the original members. Uh, and then I can relate to who was secretary, president, uh, president twice. So leadership is important. If we can get our leadership right in such a way that we have good leaders, not only good leaders, but we also have uh, leadership transfer as seamlessly as possible, none of these bickerings, the chamber becomes stronger, uh, the chamber becomes more believable, and the chamber also can plan forward on a sustainable basis. Uh, I think we also need teamwork. There's something that, nothing that's better than the teamwork. Um, teamwork uh, can also have synergistic results. Uh, people are not going to be working in sixes and sevens. Now, if we did all this, there are about eight points I've made now for consolidation. And we also did capacity building. Somebody can be a board member of other uh, corporate bodies, but coming to the chamber, you need, another uh, adjustment to focus on the uh, way forward for the chamber. Uh, capacity building at the level of the board, capacity building at the level of the membership, such that as they progress towards executive functions, they know the vision, they know the mission of the chamber. Now, if we covered all these fields, then we would have a consolidated board, which will be respected. I say this is from experience. You will recall the term, when I was president, we were quite fortunate to have all these things I'm talking to you about. Uh, and then IBB was uh, the president of uh, this nation. And he has said he wasn't going to, he hadn't just taken over and he said he wasn't going to talk to uh, any of these formations. And so it came to pass that the Nigeria American Chamber of Commerce was the very first chamber uh, that he, responded to by way of invitation. And uh, people will tell you about the success of that lecture that he gave at the uh, co-hotel uh, uh, reception hall. Never mind that if we wrote the lecture ourselves, but at least he came personally and delivered it. It has to do with the believability of that board. Also note that when uh, IBB had problems with the US, it was the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce believable as it was at that time, 
uh, that resolved the, the imbroglio and IBB went. So please let us strengthen our board for us. Charity should be, begin from the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce home. Now, if we do that, then we can uh, ensure that we continue to use the experience, the foresight, the uh, resources, and the uh, seriousness of purpose of our members to uh, achieve our aims. I would like to praise the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce, even at this time, for what they have done with respect to, especially Agua. Everybody knows that uh, the Agua uh, enactment uh, was signed by Bill Clinton, president of the US as he then was on the 18th of May in the year 2000. And it came uh, to be known as the uh, public law 106 of the 200th uh, Congress of the US. Uh, and that was supposed to assist uh, in ensuring uh, that African nations would have uh, ease of business with the US, especially the SMEs, especially the sub, sub uh, uh, Saharan uh, countries. And there were 38 of them. Of course, we know that uh, it's not enough to say that Bill Clinton did this, was not Bill Clinton's idea. You know, that's how things work. This thing about Agoa was the brainchild of a young man uh, called uh, Jim McDermott. Uh, he was on the American uh, embassy team in Zaire, but he was actually seconded to, to deal with uh, the medical needs of the embassy in Zaire, during which time he saw the suffering of the people. Going back to the US uh, after leaving the uh, embassy uh, responsibilities, uh, it came to pass that he said to himself, we must do something. He became a congressman and was able to move that motion. And once that uh, was done and approved by Congress, uh, Bill Clinton approved of it. Now, Nigeria was supposed to be the leader of the 38 nations that will profit from this arrangement. Did it happen? No. Two or three other countries uh, benefited more from it than ourselves. Uh, but Agoa is going strong. What was supposed to end in 2015, there had been a renewal, expansion of it, redefinition of it, and now there is um, uh, an extension to 2025. We're already in 2021. What can be done by the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce to make sure that the generality of SMEs in Nigeria uh, know about this Agua a bit more and seize the opportunity? Uh, it's a challenge for us, but that challenge can be eased immediately if uh, we consolidate and our charity at home is strong. Uh, even as I'm speaking to you now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Agua is meeting. There is a sixth uh, annual meeting of the Agua CSO, that's what it is called, uh, network. Uh, and this is Agua meeting with about 102 NGOs from uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to define eligibility and compliance needs to make more SMEs from Africa profit from the American uh, uh, proposal. Uh, their meeting started yesterday. I was invited to it. Uh, and it goes on today. Uh, but again, I have my priorities. And that's why I'm here. Because this charity must begin from this home. There's absolutely no need to start doing Agoa things when we ourselves need further consolidation. I believe that um, uh, Agua can easily be uh, deployed to make uh, our own chamber here more relevant and more uh, useful to, uh, to, to Nigeria and Nigerians. Now we have looked at our history, we have looked at our to-do lists and we have looked at one or two challenges. What can the Nigerian American Chamber do for America? What can it do 
for Nigeria. I think the first thing that the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce needs to do is to strengthen its networking ability. It's only when you do your network well that your net worth will be enhanced. Doing network for net worth. How much is the Nigerian American Chamber worth in the US? But if we networked with them in the US, especially through our branches, that's why I said we needed branches in the US and through our own personal and cumulative conducts, America will continue to know about us. Here in Nigeria, if we necked up with, uh, if you networked with the uh, HNIs, high network individuals, as well as with the federal government and its MDAs, uh, the ministries, the departments and agencies. And we did some uh, guided advocacy as to who we are. We should never be tired of letting people who matter, who are relevant know who we are, and what we set out to do. That network would make easier the functioning and the implementation of uh, mission and vision within here in Nigeria and outside. Uh, and I'm sure people like uh, he, there is a full-time job uh, packaging things. I believe that this network is an area where we can have an impact. That is also provided that all those things I listed on the to-do list are on. So board member speaking to board member is uh, uh, all in accordance with the mission. And we don't have memos flying up and down, having ad personam uh, accusations and so on. Uh, we need a board, we need a chamber where people themselves are so dedicated, they do not have time for some of these uh, ad personam uh, uh, you know, approaches, distractions. Now, so I believe that if we took a look at our chamber and what we can do, and then took a look at Nigeria and what can be done in the current situation, uh, we will find that um, it's not as bad as some people may think. Why do I say so? I believe that um, Nigeria in which we live now has its own catalog of problems. There are complaints everywhere. There's the blame game everywhere. There are political puppets and political puppeteers. The environment is toxic psychologically, politically, spiritually, socially, and economically. There's a lot of bile and vile and guile in the atmosphere. And people are too busy hustling, hustling and haggling for uh, existential things. And a whole lot of people are running helter skelter for economic shelter. Uh, and you find that um, this thing called Schadenfraude, Schadenfraude uh, by the Germans is increasingly becoming uh, available in Nigeria. Schadenfraude is a situation where you tend to rejoice when your neighbor <laughs> falls into difficulties. Uh, people are judgmental, people, uh, the, the, the general atmosphere uh, smells of decay and decline. So uh, we got a, a country that is at the tipping edge. Most people enjoy just talking about it. Nigeria is this, Nigeria is that. But I think the right thinking people must make sure that they do not join the generality of criticisms because criticisms have not taken us anywhere. We as people in chambers of commerce are in businesses. The businesses cannot and will not improve if Nigeria continues to deteriorate. In any case, those of you who are in business are lucky people vis-a-vis -vis those who don't have any business. Therefore, it is in your own enlightened interest as individuals and as members of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce 
to do everything to improve uh, the country called Nigeria. Only three things worry Nigeria now. The first is the issue of security, corruption, infrastructural needs, and then COVID-19, similar things. The second is usually the issue of the environment. If you were to look at Nigeria, not uh, the bird's eye view, but from a satellite's eye view, you'll find that Africa is becoming bold to the stage where the Sahel has invaded Nigeria. And if you are not very careful, your agricultural input gets low. So business is threatened. America, your partner is looking at all these and probably know more about it than yourselves. And the third one that's uh, going to be a challenge to Nigeria is the oncoming, uh, what I call the G2. You know, we have G20, G7, and all the Gs. Uh, for example, uh, you will find that uh, the G20 people are taking another look at uh, Africa now, and they're beginning to say to themselves, what can we do to help Africa? But that's in order to help ourselves. What can we do to and for Africa? And um, you will find that today, for example, the uh, the managing director of IMF, uh, Kristalina Georgieva, has just been announcing some uh, forgiveness of debt and all that kind of thing to the LICs, uh, the least uh, income countries, and they include Nigeria. Um, so they are trying to see what, how can we help these countries to help ourselves. In the same way, whereas we say that Nigeria is bad, uh, we should be asking ourselves, what can we as Nigerians do to salvage Nigeria? And who can do it best? Politicians have done it and failed. Some other vocations have done in the field. People in the private sector who together put together concavid and things like that can also, uh, in fact, think of ways of salvaging Nigeria in ways that I will talk about in the next few minutes. But remember, as the French say, come on face only, on se couche. Come on face only, on se couche. As you make your bed, so you lie on it. Nigeria has made its bed over the last 60 years in a certain way, and we're lying on it. It's the duty of the private sector to change the way that bed has been made. It's not uh, something that will happen overnight, but it's something that can begin overnight. And when that beginning starts, I want the Nigerian American Chamber to be part of it. And uh, my, when it comes to that, my suggestions are quite easy. One is to realize that when there is a problem, when there is a problem, as uh, as we said by Eldridge Cleaver, the uh, Negro uh, activist, when there is a problem, make up your mind whether you are part of the problem or part of the solution. I think members of the chamber as well as the chamber itself, what we seem to be part of the solution, selling hope to people. Secondly, some people will say, well, it's the generality of Nigerians who feel this way. And therefore, uh, there's not much that they themselves can do. But I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that many other countries have been in this situation before, uh, and they've gotten out of it. Take, for example, when uh, Dwight, uh, uh, David Eisenhower was the 34th president of the United uh, States. He has a veteran who was a five-star general. America was going through all kinds of economic and uh, even social evils. And he said, let us start to change. It is not how many of us start, but the determination in us. That's why Dwight e Eisenhower is very famous for his uh, saying, where he says, it is not the size of the dog in the fight that matters. It is the size of the fight in the dog. In other words, if we're determined and we are dedicated, a movement can start in Nigeria. So it is not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. And the movement can go positively and with results. Also realize that there's a question of attitude uh, I think it was a George uh, Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw is somebody you're very familiar with. 
George Bernard Shaw was a playwright, a critic, and in fact, um, a polemicist, and a political activist. He, he also won the, um, the Nobel Prize. Now, he it was who said that if there is a problem, don't just sit down there and blame the circumstances. If there's a problem, get up and get on. If there's a problem, make the best of the circumstances. If there's a problem, look for circumstances which we want us, which we want to use. If the circumstances don't exist, then create them. These are challenges for the so-called elite of Nigeria who have not in any way been uh, contaminated, but who want to be in Nigeria. You can't run away from Nigeria. So the only way is to, as Eldridge Cleaver says, be part of the solution and not the problem. And then you look at uh, the situation and you say, we don't have leaders. Yes, of course, we don't have uh, leaders of our choice at the moment, but things cannot remain the same for too much longer. It is time now to start creating, identifying, nurturing, and promoting leaders who know. You know, like, uh, you know, it was Thatcher. You remember what is called uh, Thatcher? Uh, Thatcher, uh, Margaret Hilda Thatcher, known as the Iron Lady. 1925 to uh, 2013, Prime Minister of uh, Great Britain from 79 to 90. She was there at a time when Britain had problems. And she keeps telling people, especially when they had that problem with uh, the Maldives, far away. And it said, Britain needs a leader who knows, a leader who goes, and a leader who shows. Such are the leaders that we must, in fact, uh, encourage people to uh, bring up in this country. Now, this country can become a noble and very puissant nation. This is a nation where we must make sure uh, we make people love it. Even if we ourselves still have difficulties, but we're still better than others. Make sure you promote things that will make people love Nigeria more, heal Nigeria, and even fix it in the long run. This may be a primary problem or challenge to members of this chamber once we are consolidated. And once we know that uh, having been consolidated, uh, you can now look around and see how your chamber can last longer. It is by looking around in your medium where you are operating. It is by networking. It is by realizing that you as an individual can make a difference. I think it was uh, Herbert uh, Hufrey, Herbert Hubert Hufrey, who was uh, a senator for several uh, years in the US, who started the uh, Humphrey Institute for Leadership uh, in Public Affairs in Minnesota University, who said to everybody, one man can make a difference. So Mr. President can make a difference, uh, he can make a difference, but in that togetherness, we can make a difference. So that whereas in our, in our Nigeria today, the youth are jobless, the uh, leaders are shameless, relationships are meaningless, attitudes are careless, wives are fearless, husbands are heartless, masses are helpless, and most of the people are now speechless. We need a group of people led by maybe persons like members of the Chamber of Commerce who, because of enlightened self-interest, will bring hope to the hopeless. We'll make sure that they aspire to make things better. We need members of this chamber who would do everything to promote the chamber, do everything to promote the, uh, Nigeria, do everything to encourage other Nigerians, to make sure that everybody aspires to inspire others before they themselves expire and meet their Messiah. If we have people like that, I can tell you there'll be fairness in this nation and there'll be goodwill to all persons involved through the initiative of this chamber. This chamber is going to live long and I wish you all well. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Can we please give our past president and the great speaker, my uncle and my hero, is Please, can we give a round of applause? Is that uh, part of your speech? You are very right, sir, about the Agua conference going on now. I'm actually on the board of the Agua International, and I was a panelist yesterday, and uh, we did speak about the issue of the Nigerian American leadership with Taita. So I, I actually go to the Africa event, and I copied some members of the chamber that we should be able to be recognized as promoting their interest. How can we say we are the Nigerian American mm -hmm. Commerce? And we were trying to embark on uh, trade missions, two trade missions were for a visa issue. So I'm talking to them Washington DC that they should give us a, a block quota, at least about 50 members every year. So we have that block and I did say that we will ensure that the proper structures put in place to ensure that this uh, system is not abused. So before I leave you guys, like you know me, you see, I hope we can uh, make some progress. Actually after this, uh, Program, I'm going to switch again to the Agua conference for the afternoon session and uh, share with uh, Les Mars, who is in SIP, uh, to see how we can both uh, move this together. With regard to the National Secretary, sir, I share your mission absolutely. And we have been working assiduously to ensure that we, you and know, we have a befitting Secretariat. We made a visit to the governor who had promised us the allocation of land. May that take forever. Unfortunately, we had the uh, answers and a lot of uh, properties of the Lagos State government were vandalized. And that had an impact on their budget. And uh, we felt challenged not to push too much pressure on them. And uh, I have a very active uh, committee member, Mr. Funtayo, who is actually spoke yesterday with the lady, Dan Williams. We're trying to ensure Ampon has given us some options and uh, we're working on it, so it's work in progress. So it's something we need to do and I'm praying to Almighty God that it's going to happen before the end of this turn off. As please, we we'll make an inroad. Thank you very much again, sir. We love you. We appreciate you. And thanks for all of us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. So, thank you very much, sir. Uh, the guest speaker and the uh, national president, we thank you for that wonderful military response. Uh, of course, there will be a vote of thanks later by Ben Williams. But before we proceed further, I want to quickly recognize the following that are uh, also here with us. Uh, we have the past president here, Chief Victor Famutini, is with us. We have the deputy president, deputy national president, Alaji Sharif Balogo, with us. Uh, members of the board here present, Dean Adebola Williams. We have uh, Dr. Ike Nahuasu, who is the secretary, is the treasurer uh, of the chamber. We have Ambassador Bayo Idowu, who is with us. Thank you all for coming. Mrs. Eileen Cheyenne is with us. Dr. Ladi Awushika is with us. We also have uh, the chairman of Cardinal Branch, Mr. Matu Bagbabe, is with us. We have the key member of the program's committee, Arendt Anjuma, is with us. We have uh, the former DG of the chamber, Mrs. Joyce Apata Ashishia. We have Mr. Dekuli Olumide, the past DG of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, is with us. Um, we have Mrs. Bumi Oshutui, Secretary General, the Nigeria arm of the International Chambers of Commerce, is here with us. Uh, Mr. Sholawi Itayo is the Vice President at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce. 
Uh, we have others. Mr. Kunle Adebayo. Uh, as we recognize others, we will continue to mention them. Uh, may I, at this point, uh, 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 Mr. Brahma, Chairman of the Committee? Hello, sir. Are you still there? Yes. Shola? Yes. Um, I think I should give you the floor, the floor for, for a while uh, before you proceed further. Okay. Um... The national president of Nasima, they, she's not been able to join. Yes, um, like I said, the the the, the first uh, deputy president is um, more or less uh, the president like lost his mother, so they are all in village uh, journey, and according to the feedback we have, the network guy is very bad. So okay. they've been trying to look up uh, the funding the digital. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Um, let me say, uh, on behalf of our national president, again, a big thank you to our guest speaker, our past president, a very distinguished Nigerian, a leader of men and women. We thank you, sir, our dear prince. Julius, I didn't see, I did you, sir. Um, while you spoke for about 45 minutes, um, it covered a broad spectrum, you know, focusing essentially on leadership. You asked us to have a strong board, and we needed to strengthen our board. Uh, we need good working committees. We need more chapters. Uh, when you were national president, you said you created a uh, about five chapters in the US and 11 in Nigeria. I think that was truly really remarkable. That was a long time ago, sir, when you were national president of the chamber. You talked about the functioning secretariat as well. And I, I dare say that um, these are areas we have focused on as a board and they'll be making significant improvements, sir. You said leadership is important and that uh, we should avoid baking as much as possible. NACC, as you rightly noticed, I can plan on a more sustainable basis to achieve, you know, great results. We emphasize teamwork, like a winning team, you know, for us to be able to achieve our goals. You also mentioned capacity building, sir. And I think uh, in that area, we have very distinguished uh, members in our ESCO and the board, and they've been doing great things. In fact, even the sectoral groups, uh, they, they have been very wonderful. So when you talk about health sector covered by Dr. Ladi Awoshika or uh, real estate where uh, Funtayo, you know, has been doing great things. You also talked about SMEs. SMEs, we all know, they constitute, the, they represent the engine of any economy. And um, in Nigeria, we understand the impact of COVID-19 on SMEs especially and uh, how they are trying to bounce back. Uh, we believe that uh, we'll continue to work in that regard because even the, most of the, the membership of NACC, in fact, most bilateral chambers, over 70% are SMEs. So that was uh, a point that we have also noted. You talked about networking too. That networking in every chamber is a major strength, you know, and I think that we can link that one up with capacity building as well. You emphasize that our net worth, network is about net worth. I think um, that even there are HNIs as well, high net worth individuals, and I will bring everything together. It will strengthen the chamber's capacity. You know, you also emphasize three critical things that um, as a country we should focus on. The security, the infrastructure, you know, the COVID-19 situation, and so on and so forth. You talked about the environment. You talk about the G2, but you didn't throw more light enough on G2, sir. You talk about G7, G20. What exactly is G2? Uh, you cited some American presidents like Dwight Eisenhower, who was president, you know, and turned things around. You also said the size of the Dog in the fight is not what is important, but the size of the fight in the dog. And I think that is um, 
a very good analogy for us to uh, take to heart as we do great things for our country, Nigeria. More importantly, is that you emphasize attitude. And I think attitude cuts across, whether at the chamber or serving in any uh, position in life, any station we find ourselves. Attitude determines how far we go in everything that we do, sir. You know, so um, you said in Nigeria, there are a lot of issues, but we can't run away from Nigeria. I'm also an advocate for a better country. I preach that all the time and that uh, we must be part of the solution and see how we can do things. We must get up and do something. Nigeria is a great country, no doubt. We are blessed in so many ways, the greatest economy in Africa. We have the most populous black nation in the world. And by 2050, Nigeria will be the most populous nation in the world after India and China. You know, we'll be about 400 million people at that time. So we really need to be leaders because as an individual, I can make a difference. Individuals can make differences, you know, but if we all come together, we can build a better Nigeria. We need to make people to love Nigeria. You also made that point, sir. And that we must make people love Nigeria. Nigeria needs healing, as you already noted, sir. And that in the long term, we can all join hands together to fix our great country. Nigeria is a great country, no matter the challenges we are facing today. We recognize that, and that we don't really have any other country we can call our own. So we have to stay here and fix this country. So we want to thank you, sir, because um, we have thoroughly enjoyed your presentation and several anecdotes, you know, several um, instances that you cited, and that uh, we really don't have leaders of our choice, but we can identify, create, uh, mobilize the young ones to be the leaders of tomorrow who can probably make that, uh, bring about that change and uh, the difference that we design in Nigeria. And it can happen overnight. I watched a video on Dubai, the making of Dubai. Between 1960 and now, the Dubai we are seeing today is different from the Dubai of even 30 years ago. So it requires great leaders, visionary leaders. And I think this is actually possible for Nigeria. Uh, being a foremost chamber, bilateral chamber of commerce, you believe we should continue to set the pace 61 years on by this year. And I know by the special grace of God, will the leadership be provided by our national president, the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce will definitely go places. We want to be the pace setters and others will just follow. So we thank you, sir. I just tried to provide a summary in a nutshell of your presentation in 45 minutes. And I think it was truly, truly uh, elucidating. And, um, we enjoyed, personally, I enjoyed every bit of that presentation. I have learned from it, and I'm sure most of our participants who have also listened you know, attentively uh, will learn you know, from that presentation. So, our DG, back to you. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, our schedule to end this program is five to two. It's about five minutes from now. I'm sorry, we keep doing that already. Um, I think we can back out a room for. But uh, before I do that, let me also recognize Barrister Chiba, Manifo Wood, the other advisor, a board member of the chamber. Because I think I think it's also the boss. Nice you, sir. Um, I think uh, maybe you take one more comment. Ambassador, do you have to put the vote of thanks by doing this? I think they wanted to say what. Yeah, they wanted to say what. Okay, this is not there. Uh, DG, 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 um, with the kind permission of the national president, I may be ask uh, before the vote of thanks, since um, the national president Nasima is not here, we will just get two other comments. Since the ambassador is not ready, two other participants or board members at least give their perspectives before the vote of thanks. Okay. Um, Hello. Okay, I think ambassador is back now. Okay, all right. Please go ahead, sir. Let me uh, adopt the existing protocol. Uh, in a saluting as guest lecturer, which uh, must follow Mr. Uh, his uh, comments 
I didn't feel I was in a lecture at all. It was like a conversation. And it really makes it uh, all the more um, enthralling. We are, some of the things he has mentioned resonates with what we are doing in the chamber. And we thank you for reminding us uh, about it. Uh, as for my colleagues, well, a word is enough for the wise. And I believe we are going to take a cue from this and we are going to uh, uh, move forward. One thing as businessmen that I would like to say, you do not like to uh, associate in any way with politics, but politics and economy are always going together. So you must, we must learn how to make them together to make our society a better place. Once again, I thank you, National President. This must have been a grilling days for you, standing up early to attend Agua. I've been following everything. Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Barito. Uh, DG, uh, any other? Maybe you want the director of programs uh, committee to make the most of thanks. The director of program? Yeah. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Okay, um, Nico, you are the director of program. Um, you are giving the vote of thanks to the structure from the national president. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, I made the chairman of programs committee. I'm sorry, uh, DG. Oh, okay, I made, okay. Uh, I made, okay. Yeah, sorry. It was, it was the only challenge to do that. Oh, I thought that was a counter structure. Okay, um, this is something to me. Uh, the original chamber of commerce, do you want to say anything before the vote of time? Okay, before there. So, I have to call on and do my level of the chairman of the committee. Uh, before the vote of time, yeah, thank you very now. much. Thank you very much, TG. Um, I must say that. The presentation today, from my perspective, has been as much as I was expecting. We've had Prince Julius, the quintessential Prince Julius, Adelusi, Adelui, the great leader, the entrepreneur, past minister, and so many other things rolled into one. And that's why I said, I'm sure to many of us here, he has not been a disappointment. Each time we come to see him talk or make any presentation, it's always with a lot of delight. I want to say that you have not disappointed us on this occasion. Now, he raised a point about the G2. I was quite expectant too, to note what we are going to say on that G2. But I, I want to hazard a guess that the G2 you meant to talk about was China and US. Am I right? You Prince, got it right on. Thank you very much. I, mean, I was so expectant. I said, now this is what I want to hear. But and I like your hair too. <laughs> thank you very much. I think the chamber would have to create another opportunity in the near future for our guest speaker to tell us a lot more about the G2. We've heard of G7, G5. Now we are narrowing down to G2. So that will be something for the future. Prince, on behalf of the president of the chamber and all the members here present, I want to say a very big thank you to you for the job you have done so thoroughly well this afternoon. I have I, I, I broke up your presentation into three. I said the first part was the historical perspective. I then went into, I then listed the present and then the future. And I think for me, I'm going to develop all you have said here. I have this habit 
once I've listened to a talk that I've enjoyed, I want to build it up so that I can bring out all the takeaways for myself that I'll be able to use in the future. I want to say a big thank you to you once again for all that you have discussed with us here this afternoon. The chamber is yours. You have been a past president. We will continue to call you from time to time to come and share your experience with us. Thank you so much, Prince. I also want to thank our past president, Chief Famutim, if he's still here, for being present and any other past presidents who have been here this afternoon, but we are not mentioned. Thank you very much for sparing your time. Our deputy president is also here in the person of Elijah uh, Sheriff. Thanks for coming. Mm. We have a lot of board members and exco members. And we had specially invited people who came, who thought it fit to come and honor us on this occasion of the celebration of our 60th anniversary. Of course, our president, the national president is the chief host. And I don't, I mean, he's the one who's brought us all here together. And so we are here on his behalf. Thank you very much for slotting this in, Otumba, despite your extremely heavy schedule where you are. I want to thank all members of the chamber and our other invited guests for sparing the time to attend this event this afternoon. Thank you all so much. I want to thank the chamber secretariat. They are doing a wonderful job under um, Shola Obadimu. Thank you for putting this together. And of course, the committee led by, of which I'm a member, but led by Ehi Brahima. Well done, Ehi. We continue to move along with the different programs. And as we do this, we'll continue to ensure we excel in whatever we are doing as a chamber and as a committee. So thank you very much, everyone. God bless and stay well and stay safe. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dame, for thanking us. Uh, thank you very much, William, for uh, that nice visit of thanks. And, uh, there are other cities lined up on the secret anniversary celebration. I will uh, go on to the end of the year, including scientific visitations, innovation projects, and so on, stimulating the anniversary down. This is the year. We will keep them back in the form of the as we go on. Uh, here marks the end of the program. Our uh, target was 75 minutes. We are four minutes uh, over the line. We now end with the national anthem today. National anthem today.
Mm-hmm. 